And now we have one of my favorite cards, Touch, where he's reaching out to touch the little butterfly friend there. Welcome and welcome back everybody, Tabletop Toki here, and in today's video I'll be doing a solo playthrough of Rogue Jr. from Button Shy Games. During the course of the playthrough, I'll give a tutorial about how the game is played, and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. A huge shout out to Button Shy Games for sending me a copy for preview to share with y'all here today, and being that it is a preview copy, things are subject to change for the final retail release. But without further ado, let's get started. Here we have a game of Aqua Rove, set up and ready to play. Over the course of the game, our goal is to arrange our modules in order to complete seven missions. We'll do so using different movement cards. If we ever complete seven missions, we will have won the game. However, if we run out of available movement or abilities before that happens, we will have lost the game. So for setup, we're going to start by placing out our four modules randomly in a two by two grid. If you want to play the basic game, you can place them with their other side up. But if you would like to use their advanced abilities, then you can place them with the ability side up. Then you're going to shuffle your deck and set one card mission side up, as well as a number of cards to form your starting hand. For a standard game, you'll play with five cards, an advanced game will be four, and expert mode will be three cards movement side up. The rest can be placed in a draw pile off to the side. On your turn, you're going to use a move card to position your modules in the shown orientation of the mission card. When you do so, you'll discard a card and move the corresponding module. You can move it any number of spaces in a straight line, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Cards can jump over one another, but they do have to abide by a few rules. Number one, they can't end up overlapping another module. They have to snap to the grid so they can't be placed like so. And they have to be placed so that all modules are still within one contiguous group. And that's all we need to know to get started. So for our first move here, we are trying to complete this draw mission. We already have this shape here, so we would just need to move this down one. This is going to be discarded off to the side. We are going to get a new mission since we completed draw, and then we will refill our hand to our original size, which in the expert game is three. So now we have splash. Really, we just need to get the brain over here, but we can only move the brain once. Another option is for us to use one of our different module powers. So we could do, for example, discard an entire hand and draw up to a full hand, which doesn't seem too great. Another option is for us to use these three cards to move everything else around the brain. So we'll use this green card to move Gizmo here, which allows us to then move Servo this way. And then we can move our widget here to make the splash formation. We'll draw a new mission card and a new set of movement cards as well. Now we have our nap card that we're trying to complete. I believe that if we can get servo down here, we'll be good to go. Question is, do we want to be able to move? Since we have a brain card, I think we'll use that one to move servo diagonally down here, which completes our nap action. Okay, now we have think so we're about halfway through and for this particular configuration we could move hmm, these aren't super great for where we need them to be this would be too far away if we were to move it twice so we're gonna have to rethink what we want to do here we do also have these available options for us so let's see if we can oh we can move brain down here and um, servo over here. So we'll move brain down one and then we'll move servo over. Which card would we like to use? Um, I'm not sure that it particularly matters. I think brain's in a good spot. So we'll use this card to move servo for our think. And now we have one of my favorite cards, touch, where he's reaching out to touch the little butterfly friend there. And we draw two new cards for our move cards. So we just need to move these up. The problem is they have to stay adjacent to one another. So we can't just move Gizmo because then Servo's down here by themselves. So we'll move Servo up one. We'll move our... Oh no, that's not great. If we do that, we don't have the correct cards to move Servo, Gizmo, Servo. So we'll have to do something else. Let's actually continue with that. We'll do servo and then we can use move an adjacent module to any valid position. So we could move gizmo up here and then discard this 
to move Servo up one more time. So we've used our widget special ability. We have one, two, three, four, five complete. We just need to try to get two more. In case the deck ever runs out, we're just going to flip it over without shuffling. So now we have create. And that gives you a little bit of options in terms of strategy of which cards you discard when. All right, for create here, hmm, we're at six out of seven. We still have three module abilities left, so we're looking pretty good. These two kind of form, okay, so if we can move Servo over first, then we can move Widget up. So Servo is going to go here. Widget's going to jump all the way up to this position, and we have create completed. We have our final one, which is stack. And in order to create this pattern, we're gonna have to be a little creative. Let's move brain here. And then we need to move widget, but we can't. Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on one second. Oh, we can move widget down using brain, and then we just have to move gizmo. So let's do that. So we're gonna move a module down adjacent to brain, and then we'll discard this one to get gizmo down here, completing stack. So we have successfully completed a lovely day out at the park with our little results-oriented versatile explorer. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of Rove Jr. Now, when this was first announced, I am a very big fan of Rove, but I thought a junior kid version does not apply to me. I don't have children. I like fairly chunky games. So this is one that I'm probably gonna pass, but I'm really glad that Buttonshy sent me a preview copy because, oh my word, the first thing that really struck me was how absolutely adorable the cards are. The way that they depicted our little explorer along with some of his friends and the shapes that they make are just, oh my gosh, an endorphin rush every time I just get the game on the table because it's so freaking cute. But beyond that mechanically, I do think that this is a really valid option for a wide range of people. Being that there are only four modules, that they have the optional very easy rules, that there are different levels of difficulty and that the movement is just based on the cards without different types of movement like you would see in the OG Rove or in Rove Aqua, I think this is a really great option for introducing people to the Rove series. Whether they're a kid, whether they're an adult who's just getting into solo gaming, or even someone who just wants a relaxing, light solo puzzle, I think that this works well for all of those. And the different levels of difficulty, I thought Expert, you know, it's a kid's game. Expert's gonna be easy peasy, but I have not won every time I've played on Expert, believe it or not. So so I did find that Rove Jr. is an amazing adaptation of Rove for a younger audience or for an audience who wants a lighter version. And like I said, I think it's a great introduction into the low gaming, into wallet size, 18 card games. If it, you're new to that and want to just get your toes a little wet before diving right in, that overall I would really recommend checking out Rove Jr. from Button Shy Games. And that's all the time we have for today. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, feel free to subscribe for free or you can now sign up for a membership for as low as 99 cents per month and that comes along with a couple little perks such as early access to future videos thanks so much for joining me and i'll see you next time bye